I'm Imani Mixon, founder and chief of the city proper, and I'd like to invite you into my living room for one-on-one in-depth interviews with the most talented creatives in Detroit, who also happen to be the homies. Oh yeah, it's called Proper Nouns. Everyone needs that one friend who knows where all the poppin' events and new restaurants are. That friend who's fun as hell and always comes in in the clutch. It helps if that name sounds like music to your ears, too. Kwaku Osei-Bansu is today's guest. He's an educator, experienced curator, and the best dance partner you could ask for. We're talking intention and building a legacy right where you are, especially if that place is home. This is the one the only the <laughs> smile, the homie, Mr. Kweku Osei uh, Bansu. Yeah, you make me laugh, yo. And I don't even know <laughs> what to call you. He's a man about town. Do people still yeah. say that? You're like the people bee's just, knees. You know, like you're all yeah. these classic, active, cool things Thank in you. one. Thank you. That's what I think you are. What do you Stop think? Here. Who are you? What's, what's your thing? Um, I'm a teacher. Okay. I love my students. I am all things black. Yeah. <laughs> I am melanated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am working to become Detroit's official yet unofficial foodie. Okay. <laughs> what are you working on now? What, what's been on your mind? So this has been my year of um, being intentional yep. uh, about things. No, I mean, I've been working on lots of programming mm-hmm. uh, uh, centered around food. Um, just because Detroit Black Restaurant Week is kind of my like, like my foundation. My biggest thing this year though is Return of Idlewild. Yes, speak on that because this, what's yeah. what's that to you? What's Return of Idlewild? Um, that's like my passion project. Um, I mean, I'm passionate about everything I'm working on, but mm-hmm. it's so much more than a party, you know. And I mean, even my parties are more than parties, but this is almost a piece of. Uh, philanthropy mm-hmm. in itself because the whole goal is to raise funds to build some infrastructure up there mm-hmm. uh, but it's it's a weekend long affair uh, July 27th to the 29th okay. up in Idlewild, Michigan um, bringing about 40 to 45 people together um, to just experience it, enjoy it, bring some more life to it, bring mm-hmm. some youthfulness to the area because right. um, it's a very old space. So mm-hmm. if people aren't familiar with Idlewild's past Sure. Like, what's that about? Yeah. What's their significance? So, Idlewild uh, was founded in 1912. It was, it is really a neighborhood, mm-hmm. um, but it became very much a summer uh, destination right. for African Americans during times of segregation. And so, it really flourished um, in such a way that it was kind of a part of what would be considered the chilling circuit. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you had performers traveling throughout the Midwest. That was their circuit of how they, you know, how they made their money. Um, in the summer, and so Idlewild was definitely one of those stops, and I mean, you had everyone from your Billy Holidays to your Duke Ellingtons coming up there to stay um, for the event on vacation, but also mm-hmm. performing, um, and so it kind of hit its heyday, and then around the 1950s, it kind of started to die out because we got like integration going, and um, with integration came... Uh, this mass exodus mm-hmm. of African Americans saying, "Oh, I can go there now. Right. I'm going." Right. And so I don't kind of died off, and so now we're in this moment where, uh, at one point, you had Jennifer Granholm promising all this money to Idlewild, like you know, with my political tenure, I plan to bring dollars to the area of Idlewild. It exists. It exists in one of the poorest counties in the state of Michigan, mm. and um, so. You know, she was making these promises, and of course, with those promises came investors of a different hue. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, the people of Idlewild, who are mostly black, uh, were trying very hard to make it so that it remained a black space. Right. And but they knew that it was never going to return to what it was in the nineteen fifties. Mm-hmm. It's just it's a different day, and I don't know that uh, we're in need of a space in that way right. today. Right. We're still in need of the space. Mm-hmm. Um, and for it to be true to its purpose, but it's the execution of it um, yeah. could be a bit different and maybe updated. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there'll be the turn up mixed with the purpose. Um, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's, I don't want that balance there. And I'm including as many of the people of Idlewild as possible in this. 
um, I think I finally gotten their love. That's good. You know, you gotta show up and smile and be yeah. that one. Like, yeah. Yes, sir. You yes, know. Ma'am. Yeah, and just showing them that this isn't about taking this from you to make it something else. This is right. about including you in the process of creating something new here. Mm-hmm. There's this convergence of both old and new that's been coming together on this, and I could I couldn't be happier about it. That's beautiful, yeah. and I think the way things are right now, there's this interesting, like, it's bigger than nostalgia. It's more like, it's less about, like, thinking about the past and really, like, trying to touch, like, trying to get closer to some true stuff because a lot of stuff right now doesn't seem real. Doesn't mm-hmm. seem like they care about you yeah. retreating as a black person. Right. Enjoy yourself. Right. So. Just being here. Mm-hmm. Sharing space. Sharing the space mm-hmm. and proclaiming it. Sticking your flag in the ground and just letting that fly. Yeah. Is like what needs to happen right. in this situation. It's not. It's, yeah. It, it, it's a labor of love. <laughs> Yeah, um, in the sense that, like, I needed to throw more than a party. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's so many parties. There's so many parties, and but I also needed to be doing more than talking. Like, for example, um, one thing, like, when I was back at Howard that we used to always talk about is, like, black folks sure do know how to have a panel discussion. Because <laughs> we do. Like, yeah. we know how to get some folks together at a table to talk about greatness and talk yeah. about change and talk about deliverance. Yeah. But, man. The work. The, like... God, like the ratio of which how of which that changes from conversation to action, it's like what? Yeah. Like this is not is something is anything happening? You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like there was a moment where I was like, all right, yeah, Black Metro is a thing, but there's this has to be more mm. than just a party, more than just go eat, right. more than just acknowledgement and awareness. Mm-hmm. It had to be action. Yeah. And so with every event that I'm going, I'm trying to take these proceeds and apply it to something that's going to actually bring about change. For sure. Um, as opposed to just like, yeah, you threw the most banking party of the week. Right, right. <laughs> Two weeks Thanks. ago. Yeah, <laughs> so when we talk about the whole idea of longevity, right, is it going to, is it something that can last? I don't like things that are a gimmick mm-hmm. uh, as far as trendy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't really go for trendy. I try to go... For mainstays, mm-hmm. things that people will always be able to connect to yeah. and things that people will always need. That's beautiful. Yeah. And I feel like you embody everything you just said because you literally look like a mainstay. You look like <laughs> not a trend. Thank you, you look like time <laughs> pounded into one thing, you know? I see that. So I can't let you sit here and not explain the outfit. I need you hey. to talk through how you were feeling because we yeah. got black and white. We got yes. some nice, stark contrast. Yes. But the details. That's why I Thank love you because the details. Thanks. I, um, I don't know. I, I was actually being very intentional. All right. We're wearing this today. Um, I knew that we'd be thinking, we'd be talking about a lot of things that have gray area. Yeah. And so I just said, you know what? This is about as black and white as it's getting. Yeah. <laughs> okay? We're going to talk about a whole bunch of gray. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> yeah, this, uh, it was very intentional, but uh, I don't know. Everything that I'm wearing is, uh, with the exception for the jeans, is vintage. I mean, this is like a women's headpiece uh, that normally would be uh, placed on top of some tresses. Right. But I, <laughs> I do not have any. <laughs> um, but for some reason, I was blessed with a head where it, pretty much any hat just works. Your head is literally the perfect hat head. <laughs> it is I the hat head. It, like, wow. <laughs> I don't know. Hold it up. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's, uh, so I wear it like a crown. Um, but it also wear kind of like hair, like hats for me yeah. are a thing. Yeah, and I like it because it's not. I'm not hiding behind it. Right. But I think New York taught taught me one thing that um, in New York I felt comfortable and free because I felt as though I could walk out of the house as a different person every day. Every day. And not on some like sociopath type shit, <laughs> but like just on some freedom of like I can literally walk out here and do me. And that gave me the um, confidence to be like, well, if I could do it in New York. I can definitely do this. And you're winning. You're oh, winning. Yeah. It feels great to win and oh, walk into yeah. a room and be like, oh, nobody is doing this. This is great. Yeah. So, yeah. And, but 
people understand that it's authentic. Yeah. And that's yeah. what the thing, because I, I think I, I try so much, so hard to walk that fine line between wardrobe and costume. Yeah. You know? Because yeah. I don't want people to be like, he's trying. Yeah. I'm not. No. This is just this is me. Easy. Yeah. You're welcome. No, like, I wake up and I'm like, I start with a hat and I just build from there. Yeah. You know? And it's just, it it is very natural for me. I don't know. Ever since moving back to Detroit, I've been finding myself so fulfilled mm -hmm. and just contributing back to a city that I thought didn't want me right. at one point. Um, what made you feel that way? I mean, it, I just think that I was a walking oxymoron. Mm -hmm. um, I am literally African-American, yet my African side doesn't necessarily consider me African because they're like, I'm from Memphis. My, my black side is like, you're African, your name is Kwaku. <laughs> you know, like, so I was never really accepted in that way. And then being gay and black in this city mm -hmm. um, hasn't always, and even today, isn't always the most pleasant thing. Right. And so back in 2009, leaving to go to college, doing that was probably the best thing that I could have done for myself then. Mm. Um, but sometimes you got to go away to realize what you left. Yeah. And I came back for like a second just to get like some training in IT and I don't know, I was like, wait a minute, I, there's a story here. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's so much going on here that I, I want to not just witness, but be a part of. Right. And I, I guess with New York, I just realized I was, I was sacrificing so much for a city that really didn't need Yo. Me. You know, Yo. it's like being in a relationship. Mm. It's like unrequited love. <laughs> it's, I love you so much. You're so cute. Yeah, you're so cute. You're so beautiful. You're expensive, but I don't mind paying. Right. But you don't really love me. No, you don't. <laughs> you you know? don't love me. Your rats don't love me. Your trains don't love me. Yeah. Your streets don't love me. Nothing like yeah. your air doesn't love me. Can't. You know, it's just so. When I thought about it, I was having all these ideas, and I talked to people, and I'd be like, "How do you think that this fits into New York?" And every time they'd be like, "Oh, someone's done that." We're good. Someone's done that. Yeah. And it wasn't that I was fighting to be unique. It was that yeah. I was fighting to be purposeful. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a purpose here? Can I have a purpose here? Do I have a purpose here? Maybe there, I have no, I'm just flow. I'm literally just dangling. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Yeah. So, you know, I move home and I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Everything that I wanted to do can exist here it's and it like, needs it and they right. want it and yeah. people are like hungry for it mm -hmm. and so literally uh, hungry literally hungry ah, <laughs> <and it's>, like, <laughs> a lot a lot of positive things have been happening and a lot of positive energy has been flowing through a lot of my relationships that's beautiful it's just been keeping me on track that's beautiful so yeah was there a process for that did it come right as soon as you got back to detroit or like what was the what that was, was the, the transition? start that was the beginning i think that i was finally in the right place mm -hmm. uh, where i could lay some roots yep um but I stopped. I think that I had been, when I said that I was sprinting away from Detroit, I'd literally been running from some things mm -hmm. um, that I didn't want to accept yep. about my upbringing and myself and my outlook on the city I grew up in. And mm -hmm. um, when I came back and really faced a lot of that, it was like I had my own Yandla moment <laughs> <laughs> without minus all the sh shouting and. Yeah. Not on my watch. Yeah, right. M minus all that. <laughs> <laughs> but. I, I don't know, it's just, I came back and I finally started to accept things for what they were, mm -hmm. and um, I started to love those things, like, and love on those things, yep. and those people. Mm -hmm. um, even my mom said to me, like, you know, it's just, I just want you to be stable, you know? Yeah. And now I finally feel like, okay, Right. I can stand up on this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just, I don't know, Detroit, it feels like such a match. It really does, and I think... What probably makes it feel that way is because it is growing at the same speed mm -hmm. that I am. Mm -hmm. Every day, every week, there's a new restaurant opening. Yep. Every, every weekend, there's a new event popping up on the scene. Every other month, there's a new collective of people that are trying to do something fresh and hot. Detroit has style. Detroit has grit. Mm -hmm. Detroit has four real seasons. So it is definitely Actual. bipolar. <laughs> yes. um, I think Detroit and I are a lot alike. Yeah. Detroit is still figuring it out. <laughs> Detroit is still, Detroit has potholes. Right. <laughs> New York is different, or like Chicago for me, which I feel like I spent more time, DC, whatever. Yeah. It's like a lot of things have already been touched and you don't know what was there before or who's in charge of it or if you don't yeah. arrive with it, but like the familiarity of Detroit, 
Where it's like you can only go so far before you run into somebody you know yeah. or who knew you when you were two right. or who like right. it's just all about you, you know? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's changing, but it's still so familiar. Yeah. And I still have literal birthrights to this place. And so that's where I was about to go is like, it's mine. Mm-hmm. Like when you get something, especially something that you didn't necessarily work for. Yep. You don't necessarily cherish it or value it as much. Right. I think because of that ownership or that sense of ownership. Uh, and that sense of belonging, mm-hmm. I just have, I take much more uh, pride in this place. There's stuff about that Detroit grit. People love it. People go other places from here and win. Mm-hmm. Hard. Mm-hmm. Like, win. Mm-hmm. You know? And I, I want to see that continue to flow. I want to see people continue to win, but I want to see people continue to win and come back. Mm-hmm. And sow those oats here. You know, um, because that's the only way that we're going to preserve this place like we're trying to preserve out of wow. Right. That's the only way. Right. And in a city that is 84% black, Say that. it is, it, people have to be intentional mm-hmm. about coming back and really pouring back into, like you, you went and you filled your glass, we'll pour it back here. Right. You know, you know something these people don't know, teach them. Teach them. Do something. You know, and then it's okay to go back um, to wherever it is that you were, but just... Remember where home is, and remember that Detroit loves you. And even, even for so, for for colored girls, <laughs> or for colored boys, um, uh, that turn blue in the moonlight. Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> you know, just remember that like Detroit does love you. It might be a certain pocket that loves you a little more than others, mm-hmm. but I had to even remind myself that like this city loves me. You know. Yeah. And the city is mine. And that I'm not walking down the street looking for you to accept me. Mm-hmm. It's already it's already written. I'm already accepted. I'm already a part. The crown is already there. Exactly. So put it on. Still put it on. Or yeah. put my head up straight so yeah. the shit will stay. Exactly. <laughs> you know? That's so, so real. Yeah. I feel that. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. I love seeing your face. Yeah. I love seeing it in my place. Like Claire Huxtable. I know. Claire. Claire. Yes. Every time yes. you say it, I'm like, well, I got a lot of work to do. No, I queen. Of, no, queen. A lot of yes. living. Yes. But yeah. Look. I'm happy you were here. Thank you for having me. Look, seriously, thank you. Oh, thank you.